Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're gonna be sick of Karens after watching this video. Don't you know who we are? This happened more than a decade ago. Names have been redacted or altered to maintain anonymity. Can never say that word. Please forgive formatting on mobile. I had already switched from chef work to sommelier work, having left my first big sommelier job to take over as head sommelier, wow, executive manager of a restaurant group. The city I lived in was in the capital, lots of embassies and lots of politicians, so the high-end restaurants would often get large parties of politicians and ambassadors. Because of this sort of clientele, we had very high-end wine lists at all of our restaurants, but not all of them were super expensive food-wise, and our house wine was very affordable, also had a lot of good wine by the glass. This made some of our locations very popular as a lunch spot for servers who worked in the area. One cloudy day, I was sitting in a corner banquet, just doing paperwork, enjoying some masaka roll-ups, like eggplant parmigiana almost rolled up, but with mashed potato inside as well as cheese, tomato and herbs. This was a specialty for this Greek mez restaurant. The server on duty was pretty busy, she was new and didn't know me, I knew her though. She was doing alright, serving everyone without too much problems, no one was waiting more than a few minutes to get attention. There was also a server from the restaurant across the street, not part of my group, but a regular, sitting and having a glass of house wine as she was organising her tips from her shift. She looked like a server, in blacks, with a black short apron, similar uniform to what was worn in our restaurant. In walks a bunch of people, a group of six. I recognised one of them as an ambassador's aide, I didn't recognise the others. Four guys and two women, one of whom had the classic Karen hairdo. They don't wait at the front where the sign says to wait to be seated, they walk right into the dining room, push two tables together and grab extra chairs. They're sitting sprawling, taking up lots of room in the middle of the dining room, talking loudly about how this place has a great wine list. One of them says he's gonna order. They have now been in the restaurant for less than two minutes total. The server on duty can't see them from the corner where they do their side duties. She's been in the back serving the VIP room. At this point, the group are already starting to complain that they haven't been served yet, which is when they notice the server from the other restaurant who is just enjoying her glass of wine. The ambassador's aide says substantially louder than it needed to be, Hey you, you can't drink on the job, why haven't you taken our order yet? The Karen hairdo says, not at all under her breath, I can't believe how unprofessional that girl is. And then to the girl, we'll have you fired for this, do you know who we are? This is an outrage. Not our server girl. Oh, um, sorry, I don't work here, I work at a different restaurant, I'm sure a server will be here to take your order soon. Don't you give us that bull, you lazy good for nothing. At this point, I'm already not liking where this is going, but I decide to wait a minute to see how the new server handles it. She's arrived with her customer service smile plastered across her face. The actual server says, Pardon me, I'm Mandy and I'll be your server for the day. Can I take your order? Finally, we've been sitting here for 20 minutes, maybe three tops, with no service and your colleague here didn't even get up to greet us. She's just getting drunk. You can't drink on the clock directed with malice at the innocent server girl from another restaurant. You need to fire her right now. I demand to speak to your manager. Do you even know who I am? I work for the consulate. I could have both of your jobs for this. It was at this point I finally recognised the lady. She was a receptionist for the consulate where she worked. I had seen her a year and a bit prior when she came in with a large group for their office Christmas party. I could have stepped in at this point, but I was curious how the new server, Mandy, would handle this. I'm so sorry, but I didn't see you arrive. Normally people wait to be seated as the sign asks, so I couldn't see you all sitting here. Please don't badger our guests though. That lady doesn't work here, and she's a paying customer. I believe she works at another restaurant down the street. Don't you dare lie to me, you little racial slur. I eat liars like you for breakfast. The rest of the six are egging Karen Hardy on at this point, and I can see this may be escalating beyond what the server can handle. So I text the owner's son who lives upstairs. He's also a part owner in the group and sometimes does a bit of managing at this location. He also happens to be a bodybuilder and he's huge. Less than 30 seconds later, I get a be right there text from the owner's son. Karen Hardy still yelling in a shrill indignant voice. Where is your manager? Get him now. You can't treat us like this. We are important people. Mandy was starting to look like she was going to cry at this point and the not our server is shrinking back into the banquet as both of them are being yelled at incoherently by this group of six rude flunkies. At this point, the assistant floor manager has arrived due to the screeching, but the six and scene screechers are just ignoring her. I stand, take a couple of steps towards them, take a deep breath, and at the top of my lungs shout, QUIET NOW! I was an actor in high school and I know how to project, so my voice fills the room. Everyone stops their shouting and turns to me. 
I say at a more reasonable voice level? Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. None of you need to speak to a manager. What you need to do is grab your stuff and get out. I won't have you shouting at my server or my guests. No one deserves to be talked to the way you have been. And before you indignantly ask me if I know who you are, I do. I know exactly who you are and I know your boss and your boss's boss, both of whom love eating here and would be appalled at your behaviour. At this point I notice Matthew, the owner's son, has just come in through the kitchen door, dressed in his gym gear, glistening with sweat like some sort of Greek statue of Hercules, 6 foot 4 and nearly 300 pounds of muscle. The look on his face just screams, I just got here and I'm already completely done with this. I can see Karen Herdy is about to protest but I hold up my hand and in my no nonsense commanding voice, no. This is not a discussion. Get up and go. Now. Well, I never. I say matter of factly, and you never will again. You can consider yourselves banned from this establishment. Matthew, the owner's son and part owner, rather more loudly than he needed to be, got out of my restaurant and don't even think of coming back. You're all going on the blacklist. Matthew's colossal form starts moving towards them and it seems the look on his face was enough to end any further discussion as the group grab their things and rush out of the restaurant. I thank Matt for coming down and interrupting his workout for the assist. The manager comes to the not our server's mail and wine for the marred experience. Our server is told she did nothing wrong, that it's okay, she's not in any danger of being fired and in fact handled it about as well as she could have. She is given the rest of the day off with pay. The group each have a headshot pulled from security cams and are added to our digital blacklist but it doesn't end there. I call the consulate and talk with the ambassador who is appalled by the behaviour of his staff, all of whom arrive back at the consulate that day to find they've been fired for attempting to use their job to bully others. He comes in personally the next week to apologise to our server, the manager and the owner's son in person and assure us that the group no longer work at the consulate. The moral of the story, never use your position of perceived power to bully others, you may well end up losing that position. Wow, the server handled that brilliantly. It must have been really intimidating to be screeched at by a Karen with six people egging her on. Ugh. I really hope this story is true and that those people really did get fired. If it is, the ambassador must really like that restaurant. <laughs> Are you sure you recognize me, ma'am? I'll start by saying at this point in my life, I was a very noticeable and recognizable person. I had mint green and bright blue hair that I was maintaining extremely well because I was a receptionist at a very large business. I just recently got in an apartment with my boyfriend that was much closer to my work and decided to stop by Walmart on my way home to pick up something to cook for dinner. I'm standing in the frozen food department deciding what option is less likely to give me heart disease when roughly the following conversation happens. Enter, probably Karen, no child in sight, spotting me in the aisle. My son broke a bottle in the next aisle, can you get someone to clean it up? I'm wearing black pants and a black polo. I clearly do not work there. I just assume at this point she can't find anyone and wants my help. Uh, I think there's someone over in self-checkout who can help. I'm sorry, I just really need to get home. Broken glass is a hazard to my son. I need this cleaned up immediately. Wait, so you left him there? I knew you were over here. I'm not going to move my cart while I still need stuff from the aisle. I just don't want him getting cut or getting his shoes sticky. Now find someone to clean it up. Uh, okay. I guess I'll go tell him there's an unattended child breaking glass in one of the aisles. As I walk away, I hear Karen say something like, Excuse me? But I've already grabbed my food and I'm heading to self-checkout anyway. Before I can even get my food set down in the machine, I hear the loud clack of flip-flops and Karen's continued, Excuse me? She now arrives to the self-checkout counter, child in tow, face red from anger. She informs the chaos lady that I was making rude remarks about her parenting, harassing her and refusing to help. Chaos Glitty looks at me confused, clearly realising I don't work there, and says there's not much she can do other than get a manager who could ask me to leave. Karen looks thrilled at the news and requests it immediately. I, at this point, am finished purchasing and ask if I can just go because I'm done shopping and I need to get home. Karen cuts in with, you can't go unless they dismiss you. Me, finally realising what's going on, tries to clear up the situation. I don't actually work here, I'm sorry about the confusion, but I really just want to leave and get home. I know you work here. I've seen you a dozen times. I don't care who covers for you, you won't lie your way out of this. Are you sure you recognize me, ma'am? Of course I recognize you. How could anyone forget that loud, tacky hair? At this point, Karen has attracted not only the attention of the manager, but the security guard by the front door. I'm not thrilled from the comment about my hair, so despite my best judgment, I decided to tell her exactly where I worked. I am the receptionist at a marijuana dispensary. Are you sure that's not where you've seen me? 
As I flipped my hair off my shoulder to reveal the store's logo, I'm pretty sure her face became a new shade of red that had gone unseen up until then. Oh, and in front of everyone too. So good. <laughs> Okay, so that's all for r slash I don't work here lady. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description and any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!